Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. A magnified shout of his holy name. Because he is king of kings. Yes, he is. And he is Lord of lords. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing too difficult for our God. Because at the end of the day, when all hell break loose, he is still in control. And he is still in charge. Our job is to have a measure of faith in saying, Jesus, it looks ugly right now. Jesus, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. I don't know, I don't know how you're going to bring it to pass. But Jesus, I'm trusting you. Jesus, I'm putting it in your hand. You do what you do best. That's our job to do. Just sit back and let God do what he do best. He can take things that's broken and damaged and he have his own repair shop. How? He's going to bind it and rebuild it and make it brand new all over again. It won't even be a scratch on it. It won't even be a dent on it. It won't even be a ding on it. Once God has his hands on it, let God do what he do best. Our job is to continue to thank him why he doing it. Praise him why he doing it. Worship him why he do it. Glorify and magnify his own his holy name. Thank you, Jesus, why he doing it. And when you're doing it, you're taking the limits off of God. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne. Glory to God. And he's still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still taking care of you right now today. He ain't forgot about you. He always working. And he's always listening. And he's always preparing you what's about to come. If you really love with Jesus, like you say that you're in love with Jesus, open up your mouth right now today and give Jesus a shout out of praise and give Jesus a shout out of glory if praise is what you do. Amen? Amen. And we're going to have some church today, my sisters and brothers. And I hope that y'all are ready for some church today because normally I go over with the praise and the worship, but today we're going to have some church today. And we need to talk about things what God is expecting me to talk to you about today. But before we get into this word, can you please pray with me? Heavenly Father God, we come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this awesome and beautiful day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this anointing message. We thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit that's moving through this place and moving through this YouTube channel and moving through my brothers and my sisters' home right now today. Let your angels surround us right now today, God. Let us taste your word. Let us feed on your word. Let us navigate on your word. Let us endorse your promises, God, in our mind, our body, and our soul, and our spirit right now. Oh, Father God, you have your way in this place right now. Father God, you know every last one I would need. You know, every last one I concerns. Oh God, we know it's not too hard. Oh God, we know it's not too difficult for you. Oh Father God, we come before you right now today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, whatever it is that's hindering us, whatever it is that's bothering us, God, Father God, we hand it to you right now today. Oh God, let your presence move through this place right now. Let your love move through this place right now. Touch every last one of your sons and your daughters, even myself right now today, Jesus, in your sanctuary. Father God, we're so thankful. We're so grateful. We're so honored and blessed, God, just to be thanking you and praising you, Father God, that we can fellowship together, Father God, under one roof, God, which is your house, because this is your house, the house that you build on solid ground, on solid foundation. They cannot be moved and they cannot be destroyed whatsoever, God. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God, for this day. 
We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for what you're about to do in this place. We thank you, Father God, because you're about to show up and show out in this place. Oh, Father God, we know that you're about to speak in this place. Oh, God, we know that you're about to move in this place. Oh, God, we know that you're about to heal in this place. Oh, God, we know that you're about to do something like you never done before in this place. Oh, God, we know that you're about to do a new thing in your sons and your daughters, even my life in this place right now. Oh, God, we lift these prayers up to you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we know that you listened to them. We know that you heard them. And, Father God, we give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise right now in your holy, precious, mighty name, in Jesus' name. And let the church come together and say, as one, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about today that some of you, now scratch that, a lot of you right now today, you got the game messed up. And you know exactly who you are. You are christening and crossing and crossing and christening. And you know exactly who you are. And basically what I'm saying, basically what I'm trying to get to you, basically what I'm trying to, what God is about to talk to you about, you cannot hold Jesus' hand and the devil's too. And that's what y'all doing. Y'all playing pity, pat, and pat, and pity. You can't do that. You got the game messed up. Either you're going to love one or you're going to hate the other. But a lot of you right now today, you know exactly who you are. One minute, you want to praise God. One minute, you want to be all holy. Next minute, you want to do everything the devil tell you to do. And you think it's okay. And you think God is about to bless you. You think God's about to open up some doors. You think God's about to take care of you. I'm here today to tell you. You got the game messed up today, my brothers. I'm here today to tell you. You got the game messed up, my sisters. God don't get down like that. He don't rock like that. But some of you, you thinking, God going to benefit you. And he know exactly what you are doing. You think he was blind? You think he not aware of what hand you holding on? What mean you want to hold on his hand when, when, when you're in the church? But soon church service up with, you want to hold to your partner hand. You want to hold to your daddy hand. You want to hold to your baby daddy hand. And God said, oh, no, nah, we can't get down like that. Either you're going to hold my hand all the way or you need to let it go. Some of y'all got one foot in the door. The other got the, you got the other foot out. Because you think that you're going to miss something. You think you think because if you roll with God, what might going to happen that people are going to look at you a different way? Which boat that you're going to get on? Which ride that you're going to ride on? You can't have one foot in this boat and the other leg in the other boat. You can't have one leg in the car and the other leg in the other car. And you can't pick. It cannot work that way. Too many right now that you're holding hands. And you got the game messed up. I'm here today to tell somebody today, you got to pick and choose right now. You have a choice. God ain't got no gun to your head. He ain't asked you to play Russian roulette. You see, you going to fall to him or you not? You see, you going to be in the word of God or you going to be in the world? Which one it is? Because Satan is the God of the world. And a lot of you right now today, you want to be in his world, but you still want to be in Jesus' world too. You can't be in two different worlds. Because you're going to love one world more than the other. Then you know what you what's going to happen if you're in the enemy's world. You're going to you're gonna have to owe him something. Because he ain't giving you nothing for free. He might tell you this. He might show you this. But at the end of the day, he's going to collect. He's going to say, you owe me something. You owe me something. And when you don't pay it back. All hell is going to break loose. We are talking about somebody got, we got to win souls. Because there's a lot of souls right now today that's lost, hurt, and damaged because they're trying to serve two masters. They're trying to, they're trying to hold two different hands. You can't. Which one you going to pick today? Which one you going to, which one you going to, you going to reconcile with today? You got a choice today, my brothers. You have a choice today, my sisters, and we're going to read from three Bible um, scriptures today. We're going to read from Matthew 6, verse 24, then we're going to go to James chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 13 through 15, then we're going to finish off at Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. Again, 
Matthew 6, verse 24, James chapter 1, verses 13 and 15, and Revelation 3 and 16. I need all my sisters, I need all my brothers, every young man, every young girl, get your pen and paper out because I want y'all to take down notes and I want y'all to read these Bible verses right now. You have a choice to make because too many of you right now today, you got the game messed up. You getting double crossed and you don't even realize it. What are you going to do today? Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, verse 24. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No one can serve two masters. I'm going to start right there. He's giving you his word right now. He's giving you his promise right now. He is telling you, young man. He is telling you, young lady. He said, no one, absolutely no one, good God Almighty, can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve God and the devil. You can't hold God hand in the devil hands too because you're going to love one more than the other. You're going to despise one more than the other. Too many right now you're trying to say, okay, which one I pick? The pity or the pat? If you're smart enough, my sisters, if you're smart enough, my brothers, if you're smart enough, young man, young lady, you better hold on to God hand. So I'm going to tell you right now, the enemy can show you some things. And it looks so good, but he's going to trick you and he's going to lie to you. And once he's done with you, he's going to spit you out. And when you try to leave, you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to owe him something. But when God gives you something, he gives it to you because you follow his rules and his commands and you is obedient. You ain't got to pay God back anything. Your job is to continue to trust him and praise him and worship him. It's either you're going to love God or you're going to love the enemy. Which one? He said no one, absolutely no one, can serve two masters. Which master are you going to choose today? Which master are you going to pick today? Which master are you going to ride with today? Which master are you going to rock with today? Which one? Because a lot of you right now today, you're trying to pick both of them. You want to have both of them. You want your ice cream and your cake and eat it too. And God said, nah, he don't get down like that. You got to make up your mind right now today. You have a choice to make. And you know who you are. I know some of you right now today, you might not want to hear it. Because that's what you're doing. You're choosing the world instead of the word. You're choosing, you're choosing flesh over the word. You're choosing darkness over the light. That's what you're doing. You love God less, but you love your partner, your homeboy, your daddy, your uncle more than you love God. Because the enemy has been playing with you. He has been bamboozing you. He has been tricking you. He has showed you something. You say, oh, God, I ain't got time for this. I'm going over here to rock with him. A lot of you right now that you don't sold your soul. For a dollar, you don't even realize that you're going to have hell to pay when it's all over with. You sold your soul just to be rich and famous. For what? For a hot minute? You don't realize that you're going to burn eternally in hell? That you're going to suffer what you've done? Because the devil who you sold your soul to, he's going to make you pay. He's going to give you the business when it's all said and done. Then you're going to be crying for God, but it's going to be too late. But I'm here today to tell somebody, you got a choice. You got a chance right now today to say, God, I repent. Please forgive me. I, I chose the wrong hand. I chose the wrong homeboy to hang with, to roll with, to rock with. I thought I was winning over here, but the whole time I'm hurting. I'm suffering. I can't take it anymore. 
it's not too late to give your life over to God right now today. It's not too late. And say, God, I want to hold your hand, your unchangeable hands, your merciful hands, your loving hands, your powerful hands. Come on, I ain't too late for you today, my sisters. I said, ain't too late for you today, my brothers. It's time for y'all to make your mind up right now. Who you really going to love. Who you really want to rock with. Who you really want to hang with. Who you really want to be your ace boom coon. I don't know about you, but Jesus always will be my ace boom coon. You can't serve two masters. He said, no one. No one. What are you going to do today? Let's go to James. Chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 13 through 15. James. Chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 13 through 15. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. Do mm. you see that? When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. And we, we get in our weak low moments when that flesh come about and we see something. Enticing, we see something that look pleasing to the eye, pleasing to our flesh. But the word of God says, When tempted, no one should say, God tempted me. You can't say that God made you cheat. You can't say that God made you do this and God made God made you do that. You did that on your own will, your own desire. Because why? You held your hand with your buddy. Just for a second. Just for a brief minute. That's what you did. You stepped out on your marriage. We can't blame God for that. You got to blame yourself because the enemy showed you something. He whispered in your ear and you went for it. Because you was weak. Because he knew that you was weak. And he knew that you weren't about that life. And he knew that you was lame. He knew that you was a buster. He knew that you was a sucker. He knew that you was going to do it because you've been wanting to do it. You've been itching to do it for quite some time. So he put it right there in front of your face and said, here, there it is. There you go. What you going to do with it? He said, I got to go taste it. I got to have it. And that's what you did, my brothers. That's what you did, my sisters. And when it all said and done, what happened? Both of y'all transmitted evil spirits in each other's body. His body was weak because he had her. Her body was weak because he had him. Both of y'all battles were dead because neither one of y'all had a good jump start. When it's all said and done, what y'all have? Nothing. What did y'all accomplish? Nothing. What did you get out of it? Nothing. You felt some type of way when it's all said and done, that didn't you? The girl begging the guy, can I call you? He said, no. The boy asked the girl, can I call you? He said, no, I got a husband. I got a boyfriend. I got a fiance. Are you following me what I'm saying? For God cannot be tempted by what? By evil. Because God is love and love is God. You was tempted by evil because you held hand with your baby daddy. You held hand with your uncle. That's what happened. Come on, I'm just keeping it real. I ain't about to sugarcoat nothing. I'm just telling for all the people that's out there cheating. For what? God didn't tempt you to do that. The enemy tempted you to do that. And you went for it. Because he knew that you was weak. He knew that you'd been wanting to do it for quite some time. He'd been studying you. He has been observing you. And at the right time, at the right moment, and he told that guy, hey, I guarantee you, this girl right here, she do things that your wife ain't doing. She doing things that your girlfriend ain't doing. She doing things your fiance ain't doing. This is what you been wanting all the time. There she go. She want me. And your weak self went right on over there. He been studying you too, my sisters. He said, he got a guy right here. He doing this right here. Your husband ain't even doing this what he can do. This guy right here doing something that your boyfriend can't do. This guy right here doing something that your fiance can't do. He's been studying you. He's been observing you. So he knew at the right moment, he put the guy and said, well, there you go right there. 
He don't care if you're married. He don't care if you're in a relationship. He just want to get it on. Because he knew that you want to get it on. So what you going to do? Your dumb self went for it too. Then you get mad and say, Satan made me do it. Nah, you did it. You can't get you can't tell Satan he made you do it. You did it because you was weak. Some of you right now today, you giving your partner too much power where he don't even have the power. You wanted to cheat. You wanted to creep. You wanted to be sneaky. That's what it was. God cannot be tempted by evil. Are you following what I'm saying? Nor does he tempt anyone. So God's not going to tell his son, son, he go a pretty woman right here. I want you to go cheat on your wife with her. He's not going to say, my daughter, he go a handsome, man, a handsome man right here. I need you to go have an affair with this guy over my son. God don't do that. On your partner who you holding hands with, he the only one that get down like that. The only one. Holler at, holler at your boy. Nor does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when by his own evil desires he is dragged away and enticed. Then after the desire has conceived, it give what? It give birth to sin. Mm. And sin what is full grown, it gives birth to death. A lot of you right now today, you walking like the walking dead right now. Because you don't give birth to sin. What is sin is something that you don't done over and over again. It's one thing that you sin, you ask God for forgiveness. But you continue to do the same sin over and over again. You're working with a nine-month pregnant sin belly. Right now today, my brothers, my sisters, and at any given moment, you better give birth to that sin because that's how many times that you are continuing to do it over and over and over again. You have not stopped because you don't want to stop. And the reason why you don't want to stop because you are holding a hand with somebody, but you still want to hold God's hands too. You got the game messed up. You got the game messed up today. And you know who you are. A lot of you right now that you got the game messed up. You think God is going to bless you because you are cheating? Oh, no. You think God is going to bless you because you continue to break his son and his daughter hard when God knows that you're in the wrong? You're not getting blessed? You're in a hot mess because you got the game messed up. You are being double cross and cross double each and every day. You're a confused, young man. You're a confused, young lady. And we all know that the enemy is the author of confusion. That let, that let me know that a lot of you right now today, you are playing in the devil's playground because you got your mind all tangled up. You can't blame God for that. You got to blame your own self. You can't hold God's hands in the enemy hands too. A lot of you, oh, I hear God. God told me to do this. God told me to do that. Okay, if God told you to do something, why are you not doing it? Why are you still doing what you want to do? That means that you got God's hands and you got the enemy's hand too. But God going to let his hand go because God said, I can't hold your hand and you got your you got your daddy's hand right there too. Oh, no. Nah. Him and I, we don't, we don't rock like that. We ain't on the same team. And you wonder why you're going through what you're going through right now. You wonder why you're hurting. You wonder why you're suffering. You wonder why you can't get ahead. Because you're being disobedient. God gave you the street orders for you to do something. And you said, God, oh, I heard you, God. But God, I'm going to get back with you later on. Because my other partner right here, he told me something too. But what he told me, it sounded a little smoother than what you said. It sounded a little slicker than what he than what you said. But what he's showing me, he's telling me, he's going to give me this right now. But you telling me, God, I got to wait a little bit. I don't know about you. I ready to wait a little bit. Then take some from him. Because he gonna want to pay, he gonna want to, he gonna want his return. He gonna want his gift back. And a little bit more. Too many of you right now that you don't sold out to the wrong person. You holding the wrong person's hand. Where he is taking you, there's no ending. There's no light, nothing but darkness. When you hold God's hand, it's nothing but light. Nothing but peace, nothing but blessing, nothing but hope, nothing but abundance, nothing but, 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 but merciful and grace each and every day. 
So you got a choice to make, my sisters. You have a choice to make, my brothers. Which hand are you going to choose? Because you cannot serve two masters. And God didn't tell you to go cheat on your husband. And God didn't tell you to go cheat on your wife. God didn't tell you to pack your belongings up to leave out of your marital home. You've done that because that's what the enemy told you to do. So you got the dad to say, oh, I talked to God. God told me this. And God told me that. I know you talked to God, not the God I serve. You talked to the God of the world. That's who you talked to. That's why you so confused. That's why things are not happening the way it's supposed to happen. So why are you stressed out now? Jesus don't call stress. He calls peace. And when God gives you peace, he says, I got this under control and I got you. You ain't got to worry about anything, my son. You ain't got to worry about anything, my daughter. I'm going to make sure that you're going to be okay. Good God Almighty. I don't know about you, but I'm okay because I'm at peace. Because why? I'm holding on to my God unchangeable hands. A man who should not lie. A man who should not change his mind. A man who always stand on his words. He stand on his promises. And I know I can always depend on him. I know I can always rely on him. I know he will always come for me. Because he is right there with me in the storm. And also through the fire. I got my God because I serve a big God. A mighty God. A merciful God. A loving God. A God he's the same today. Yesterday and forever. My God. Glory to God. A lot of you right now today, you got the game messed up. Thinking you're going to get rewarded by holding God's hand in the enemy hand. You ain't get nothing. You better go ahead and confess right now before it's too late. You got time to give your life to God right now. You got time to give your life over to God right now. You got time to kneel down before the throne and repent. And you know who you are. They say, I made a mistake. They say, I, I held the wrong person's hand, God. I'm sorry. He's going to forgive you. What you going to do today, my sisters? I say, what you going to do today, my brothers? You got a choice right now. You got an opportunity right now. You better get on the right game on the right side. Because you continue to hold on to your daddy's hand. Good God Almighty, you going down with him. There's no win-win with him. But with God is always victory. You got a choice to make. Which one you gonna pick today? Our last Bible scripture, Revelation three, verse sixteen. The first one was Matthew six, verse twenty-four. The second one was James chapter one, verses thirteen and fifteen. The last one is Revelation chapter three, and we're gonna read verse sixteen. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Hallelujah. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Good God Almighty. Do we hear what God is telling you right now today? Are you trying to hold his hand and the enemy hands too? He says... Not my word, but the word of God says right here. Good God Almighty. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold. That's what he's saying. You ain't hot with him. You ain't cold with your buddy. He said, but you cannot continue to hold my hand and continue thinking that you think and praise me when you want to praise your buddy. But what God said, neither you are hot or cold. But he said, I'm going to spit you out of my own mouth. Even you call me, he said, I ain't going to even know you. I ain't going to recognize your voice. So I'm telling you today, my sisters, I'm telling you today, my brothers, you got the game messed up. You have a chance and you have a choice and you have an opportunity right now today. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now today, but you have a choice to make right now today. Which hand are you going to hold? Which team are are you going to join? And it's not too late, my sisters. It's not too late, my brothers. It's not too late, young man. It's not too late, young woman, to give your life over to God right now. What you going to do? Because you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. 
Either, either you're going to be hot or you're going to be cold. But if you eat, if you neither, he said, I'm spitting you out. And I promise you, he ain't gonna, like he said, I will, you can call my name. I will not come to you because I will not even know you. I will deny you because you denied me. Good God Almighty. God cannot tempt evil things on you, my brothers and sisters. That was your own evil desire because the enemy knew that you was weak and he knew that you wanted to do that. He knew that you was wanting to creep. He spoke to you. It's like he did Eve. And you start talking back. That's what you did. You cut a side deal with your uncle. You cut a side deal with your daddy. You cut a side deal with your baby daddy. You cut a side deal with your homeboy. When you cut that side deal, that's what made you step out on your marriage. That's what made you step out on your relationship. That's what made you say, God, I can't hold your hand right now, but I got to hold my partner's hand right now. You got the game messed up. And I'm praying and I'm prophesizing for you right now today, my sisters, my brothers. I don't know who it is, but I believe in the mighty name of Jesus right now that someone, somehow, somewhere, is going to get their life over to Christ right now today. They're going to make the right choice today. They're going to make the right move today. And you're going to repent of your sin. And Jesus will forgive you for what you've done. Join the right team. Join the right hand with this unchangeable hand. You can't hold God's hand and the enemy's too. Which one are you going to choose today? Which team are you going to rock with today? You got the game messed up. And if this word is for you, and you know God is talking to you, and you know who you are, make the right choice today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you, to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is webbers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen a face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my sisters and brothers. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This is every minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name, God bless you. Amen.